everybody, welcome back to the brand new video and new episode of Throwback Thursday. Today I was looking through my collection of unopened wax boxes and I came across a box that I've never before opened on the channel. I even went back and checked my uh, my history, typed in Jabs Family 1989 tops, mini leaders, and didn't see this there. This was uh, one of my all-time favorite sets as a little kid. When I first got into collecting 1989, the 89 Topps Andy Van Slight card that I pulled from my first ever baseball ca card pack that I remember opening was the card that hooked me. And then not too long after that, I started really getting into these Topps Mini Leaders. I remember I used to buy these um, at Hill's Department Store, I think it was, most of the time. They were by the checkout aisle. Right across from the tabloid section, you know, all those like National Enquirer and stuff like that, right? The checkout candy bars were there, and guess what? They had boxes of these on the shelves. You could just pick them up for a quarter pack. Those were the good old days. I remember pack searching these, looking for pirates on the back. I don't think there's that many pirates in the set. There's only 77 cards, but we're going to open this up right now so that I can reminisce the uh, 1989 Topps Mini Leaders. Now, this box looks like it got the crap kicked out of it. You can see there's a big old mark across the, the front. What I think used to happen is back in the day, uh, Tops would allow retailers to send back unsold cards, and then they would put a big ink swipe across it. A lot of times you'll see this with garbage pail kids and stuff like that as well. So I don't know if this was a, a send back to Tops or, or what. So if anyone knows the story of these like large ink splotches across these old wax boxes, you can let me know in the comments. All right, so back in the day, they were actually 30 cents. A pack and there were seven cards per pack you can see it kind of looks like an 89 tops wrapper sort of at least the color scheme and um seven cards in here 30 cents so not that much off from what tops was in 1989 what was 89 tops 45 cents a pack i think um but you could always if you really knew what you're doing you could kind of look right through the pack and see who you had there and also if you knew anything about the back you could kind of look at the back and see as well so a little bit of early pack searching as an eight-year-old that i used to do looking for uh, my favorite players so let's go ahead and do this folks a little personal break here of an 89 tops mini now these boxes used to be like oh i don't know three to five dollars a piece they're probably a lot more than that now so you see the iconic 1989 tops design at least the nameplate there there's rafael palmero and cal daniels they don't have and they don't have any borders there well, i guess they have a white border uh barely like but no like a line around the uh, the outside of it there's fred mcgriff you're gonna see a lot of the good players from this set or from this time period in here there's tony Gwynn and roger clemens the backs of the cards, I always thought these backs were really cool. I would love to read the stats, and basically they chose the 77 players in here based off of them being league leaders in a category. Like Fred McGriff was number two in the home run category in 1988, and why? Is Fred McGriff not in the Hall of Fame? I have no idea. Hopefully he will be someday. He is very deserving with his 492 or so career home runs. And I'm pretty sure not one person has ever suspected Fred McGriff of using steroids. So I think he really should be. And there's Steve Sachs looking all, I don't know what he's doing there. And Steve Sachs, a major player in the Simpsons baseball episode. There's Kirby Puckett. It's 30 years um, this month, I think, that that episode came out. There's Mark McGuire, Big Mac. Used to love that card. Mark McGuire, 32 home runs in 1988, following up his... 47 home run campaign here's the checklist so we can, you can get an idea of who else to look out for in here definitely some good names i was always after the andy van slyke and bobby bow from this set i don't think barry bonds has a card in this set i think he was in the 1990 mini mini leaders but if you'd like to pause that and see if your favorite player is in there or whatever you can do so but there's a ton of great names in here lots of hall of fame we see greg maddox right there very nice uh, photo of Maddox. I did like the photography. It almost felt like every one of these cards was was like a short printer parallel to me because I'd never seen these pictures before. So I was super into these as a kid. There's Joe McGrain with his 218 earned run average in 1988. Good old Joe McGrain. That was his best season by far. Frank Viola. There's the Nolan Ryan right there. That's a great card. Nolan Ryan always amongst the league leaders in strikeouts. You can see number one with 228. Rick Rushell. Led the league in wins with 19. Rick Rush will getting the job done. I think I want to say that my one friend used to say that his uncle was Rick Rushell, and I don't think I ever believed him. 
I think his name was Nick Y, and I, at least my friend's name was, and uh, it was, I'm pretty sure he swore that Rick Russell was his uncle or something like that. There's Chris Sabo. Terrible batting stance right there. He must be checking his swing. That's not a very good spot to start your swing from. But Chris Sable, major leaguer, 271 average there the previous year, 1988. No gold cup cards in these. No all-stars in these. It's just all base cards. By the way, tonight we'll be doing the auction of Justin Harris's cards. I hope you can join us for that. Lots and lots of great cards in that collection. There's Harold Reynolds cheesing it up. I really like the borders of these. I think these cards are pretty gorgeous looking. Gary Pettis probably led in triples or stolen bases. Yep, stolen bases with 44. There's Gerald Perry, former Pirates hitting coach, and another Chris Sabo. See our second Chris Sabo on the day. Oh, there's Tony Gwynn once again. It'll probably only take about 15 packs to see every card in the set or so. There's Doug Jones. Jeff Reardon. My brother and I used to mistakenly call him Jeff Rear End just to be... Little little brats. And Teddy Higuera, we used to call Teddy Hugger. I don't know if we just couldn't pronounce the name or what the deal was, but uh, maybe something to do with a teddy bear. Teddy Hugger was the name of Teddy Higuera, and we both hated him for no reason as well. I don't know if anyone else had that complex when you were a kid. Like, was there just certain players you didn't like at all? Let me know in the comment. who, What players did you just you couldn't stand for whatever reason? Maybe there was a card photo that just rubbed you the wrong way where they are looking smug or whatever. There's... Mike Greenwell, maybe it was a name you just couldn't pronounce, so you didn't like them for that reason. There's Jose Canseco. We've got Gary Gaetti right there. There's John Tudor. I remember using him in RBI 1 Baseball whenever I was the Cardinals. He was their number one ace. Good old NES Baseball. Loved all those different games. RBI 1 played a ton of that. That was the first baseball game we ever had on that system. Bases loaded games were great as well. There's Jack Clark in his Yankees uniform. Dave Stewart. Always uh, a menacing figure out there. Mark Langston. We have this. I never did this, by the way. Of all the packs I got as a kid, I never sent that in to try to win myself a trip to spring training. And we got Tony Gwynn for the third time along with the Fred McGriff and Roger Clemens. There's Hubie Brooks. Hubie Brooks doubles, 35. Pretty good season in 88. John Franco, one of the top closers of the 80s. Vince Coleman, of course, always seemed to lead the league in stolen bases in the 80s. Gary Gaetti, once again. What the heck did, did he lead in? Home runs with 28. Gary Gaetti. John Tudor, once again. There's Alvin Davis. I remember seeing Alvin Davis up close and personal, sort of. I was at the Seattle Mariners spring training home. I can't even remember where it was. Was it Peoria, Arizona? I can't remember. Is that even a place? Did it start with a P? I can't remember exactly. But I remember just kind of like sneaking around behind the scenes because it's spring training in Arizona. There's so many little places you can go. And I remember him working with the, um, I think it was the Seattle Mariners team as a coach in the uh, in the batting cage, like the back, back batting cages. There's Wade Boggs, our first time seeing Boggsy. Probably led the league in doubles, huh? Oh, he led the league in a lot of things. 45 doubles did lead the league. A 366 average. Only hit five home runs. I bet you if Boggs wanted to, probably could have been a power hitter. I think I heard that interview somewhere that Boggs said if he wanted to hit like 25 or 30 dingers, he could have, but it would have cost him like 50 points of batting average. That's the way it goes. Some of these guys that are power hitters now, they could probably challenge for batting titles if, uh, if they wanted to, if they cut down the swing a little bit. There's Willie Wilson. I've heard people say that if Ichiro would have, uh, you know, wanted to be in a home run derby, he would have won every home run, run derby he was ever in, a la Pete Alonso. Because I remember seeing Ichiro in batting practice. That guy could really mash. He could really put on a show. Just He would just deliver ball after ball after ball. Pretty much uh, always hit him in the same spot as well. Kind of like two sections over right down the line in right field was always a good place to play him. There's Ozzie Smith. I love that picture of Ollie Smith. I don't know why. It's such a simple, simple picture. But uh, I, don't know. I feel like that's, some of these pictures on these 89 Tops Mini Leaders would be well served to be blown up and put on like a poster or something. There's Eddie Murray, one of the all-time greats in Baltimore Orioles history. I was listening to uh, MLB Radio. There's Sid Bream, one of the few pirates in this set. Listen to MLB Radio today. They're talking about the Orioles' Mount Rushmore. Like, what four players... Would you put on the Orioles' Mount Rushmore if you could? And they were debating. Obviously, Kyle Ripken's got to go on there. 
Uh, you know, Brooks Robinson probably has to go on there. They're debating. Do you put Frank Robinson on there with six years in? Eddie Murray's probably got to go, go on there. Jim Palmer. Uh, you got Mike Messina. Rafael Palmero. But if you only had to choose four, who would you put on? That was an interesting conversation. Kind of an, an interesting exercise for any team. Think to like, for example, the Yankees would be a really tough one. I would say Ruth is definitely on there. He's like the George Washington of uh, the Yankees. You got to have Babe Ruth. And then after that, where do you go? Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, Derek Jeter. But then you're missing a whole bunch of other great players as well from the Yankees. Marion Rivera, like he's got to go on there, right? So who do you take off? There's Jose Canseco. Does Joe DiMaggio not make it? Probably not. I would say Mantle definitely has to be on there as well. But the Yankees would be a tough one. They have all these Hall of Famers. Dave Winfield, another great consideration. I was thinking about the Pirates, Mount Rushmore. I'd, you definitely got to have Clemente and Wagner on there. But who else would you have on there? Would you put Barry Bonds on there? I mean, he don't, only played, what, six, six and a half seasons for the Buccos. Kind of a cool conversation, thinking about specific teams. There's Kevin McReynolds on the back. That was another guy I didn't like, and I don't know why. Maybe because he stole 21 bases in 1988 and got caught stealing zero times. and uh, I don't know. <laughs> Some weird re reason. David Cohn. I never minded David Cohn. Mike Scott was a very, very good pitcher for the Astros. Had lots of great seasons. There's another Wade Boggs. Kevin McReynolds. Now, I was thinking I was probably only going to open 15 packs, but I haven't yet found a couple key cards that I want to find. That would be the Andy Van Slyke and the Bobby Bow, Bobby Bonilla. I'd love to see those one more time. There's Alan Anderson right there. You might remember him. Todd Worrell, nice closer before. I think he had he blew out his arm or something. There's Paul Molitor, Hall of Famer. Johnny Ray. I think my brother really liked Johnny Ray for just a little while. I think everybody used to like the Johnny Ray opening their error card. It said Barry Bonds, but it was Johnny Ray. Actually, my brother and I found that at a card show once for a dollar. And I think we both passed on it stupidly. And then we went back the next day to go grab it and it was gone. Gerald Young, that's a name from the past. And Eric Davis. I used to mimic Eric Davis in the backyard as a kid. His batting stance with those low hands. He was a slugger. Alvin Davis once again. There's Dwight Evans who had a really, really nice, nice career. Daryl Strawberry, the straw man. There's Robin Yount. First time seeing Robin. Always rocking that iconic mustache. There's a few cards early in his career where he doesn't have a mustache, and it's kind of jarring. Like, it just uh, doesn't even look like him. You're like, who's that imposter? Alvin Davis again. Tons of Alvin Davises. No Andy Van Slykes. Come on, Van Slyke. Where are you? There's Kevin McRowell once again, of course. We got Brett Butler, Mr. Triples Machine right there. Uh, nine triples in 88, it looks like. Always good for laying down bunts. And there's Kirk Gibson, who got the cover boy spot of the box. He's actually on the box right here. Kirk Gibson, famous uh, around this time period for that game one home run of the World Series off of Dennis Eckersley on two bad knees, limping around the bases. One of the all-time great plays in all of history, and that's an awesome card. I used to love, love, love this card as a kid, folks. The 89 Tops Van Slyke card. Uh, this is the mini leaders version. Man, I used to love this card. Andy Van Slyke was my favorite player there for so long, and I would always be looking for that. Look at that. There's that image from the actual 89 Tops um, baseball card. I wonder if they did that with these other ones. I don't think that they did. But uh, Van Slyke, you see, was a pretty good pickup for the Pirates. They picked him up uh, at uh, April Fool's Day of 1987. Traded, traded their best player away for him traded Tony Pena. A lot of you probably remember Tony Pena. There's Jim God again. I used to hate this card as a kid. I always felt like he was like, like his eyes were closed. Like, I don't know if he's squinting or mid blank, but that was a kind of a terrible picture of Jim God. He was our former closer for a little while until he just wasn't very good anymore. Another Van Slyke. Nice. Two Andy Van Slykes as a kid. This would be a great pack with two Van Slykes and a Jim God. There's Will Clark. Jose Rijo. And a nice Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson, one of the all-time greats. No doubt about it. Ricky Henderson, an awesome, awesome player. Definitely, you know, some people would probably put him as, would you give Ricky Henderson the best player of the 80s? Who is the best player of the 1980s? Some of you might say Don Mattingly. Some of you might say 
Ricky Henderson. Some of you are going to likely say somebody like uh, George Brett or who else would be in that conversation? Kyle Ripken, maybe. Andre Dawson had some very good years. Eddie Murray as well. Lots of great players throughout the 80s. Of course, Tony Gwynn got his career started in 1982, so he would be in the discussion. There's Gerald Young once again for his 65 stolen bases. Never really hit too much, though. Kind of like a Billy Hamilton type guy that had all the speed in the world but just couldn't really get on base. There's Steve Sachs again making a goofy face. Steve Sachs struggled throwing the ball there. He always had a, at least he at one point had a case of the yips, which is where you just can't throw the ball where you want to. Other players have had that throughout Major League Baseball history. Steve Blass was probably the, the first and most famous to, to have that problem. There's Kirby Puckett, Mark McGuire once again. It was actually named after Steve Blass, Steve Blass Disease. We've had other players running into that, like Rick Ankiel and uh, Chuck Knobloch had some bouts of it. Pedro Alvarez with the Pirates used to have that issue. Throwing the ball across the diamond. A lot of times it would end up in the dugout. But I, I feel like Pedro would always be good for like 30-some throws errant throws per year good old Peter Alvarez where is he right now everybody thought he was going to be the savior of the Pirates organization and he did have some good seasons but not many he led the league in home runs actually tied to the league league in home runs in 19, or 2013 with 36 with Paul Goldschmidt but beyond that just uh you know lots of strikeouts lots of low average seasons poor defense I feel like if Pedro was drafted, there's another Nolan by like an American League team, he would have done pretty well. He did go to the Orioles after the Pirates and try to continue on, mostly in a DH role, but it just uh, it never worked out. I think it was kind of like a confidence issue with Pedro because when he was at Vanderbilt, that guy used to rake. I was like, oh, we finally got a pick right. Pedro Alvarez, what a great pick. First rounder, Jim Gott once again falling asleep there at Three River Stadium. Craig Swindell. We've got Paul Mulder. I think we've pretty much seen all of these cards, by the way. We're starting to see doubles, triples, quadruples, and quintuples. You can see there's Ricky Henderson again, so I'll probably end the video. I'll do one more pack after this one, and then we'll probably shut it down. And I'll keep a couple of these packs and drop them into a couple of Patreon packages here and there. By the way, I hope you'll check us out. There's our third Van Slyke, so it's getting hot for Van Slyke now. Actually, I haven't seen the, the Bobby Bow yet. Bobby Bow's in the set, right? I feel like I gotta go until I find him. How about we go until I find Bobby, then I'll shut it down. Somewhere out there, there's a big Bobby Bow fan. It's like, wait a minute, Jabs, you didn't show me my Bobby Bow Nia yet. And Nolan Ryan for like the third time. Jack Clark again, there's Ricky Hen. There he is, Bobby Bow. So there's Bobby Bow, switch hitter. For the Pirates and uh, still one of the most highest paid players on the Mets roster, getting $1 million every July 1st from the Mets on a crazy, crazy deferred contract. That's uh, that's an awesome card. I used to love Bobby Bow as well. One of my favorites. It was it was Vance like Bonds and Bunny. I loved those guys as a kid. Jim McGran, last card. So I'll save these other packs. Just wanted to share this box with you. Some of you might not even be aware of the mini leaders run of Topps cards. Basically, they were a bit smaller in size. Like, if you take a look at this, and then you take a look at a regular baseball card, you'll see that they're um, they're probably about 25% uh, smaller or so. But still a really cool uh, set. And they ran these. They printed these mini leaders from 1986 through 1990, and then that was the end of it. Tops did try some other minis. Like, you may have seen the micros and stuff. But in terms of like a big retail release like this it was just basically for that five-year run 86 through 90 but cool cards a little more affordable for the kiddos 30 cents i like i said used to buy these all the time but that's it for right now for throwback thursday everybody tomorrow we'll have a face off friday for you the saturday showdown is filling right now on patreon i just opened it up not too long ago it's going to be 2022 tops jumbo boxes actually cases from series one Lowest numbered card gets the entire case. We'll be looking for the Wander Franco short prints and super short prints and chasing the Mick and those home field advantage cards or hometown advantage cards that everybody's after. So I hope you can join us for that as well. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. Hope to see you in the auction tonight, and I will see you all later. Good night, everybody.